This is one of those frustrating chapters. Why, why, we ask. Samson knows what Delilah is doing. Why does he stay there with her? Why does he tell her the truth? He seems to not be believing the truth. He's not realizing the pain and hurt and suffering caused by sin. He'd rather stay with this person of earthly pleasure than make sure he follows God's decree that a razor never touch his head. He seems to think the Lord will be with him either way. He knows he's told his secret. She's tried everything he else he's told her. It's only reasonable that she would shave his head, but Samson jumps up thinking the Lord's strength is still in him, but the Lord has left him. He chose self and not God. The Lord left. The Lord uses that for Samson's good, and Samson is humbled. He calls on the Lord for strength, and God hears and answers. God uses Samson in his death, even, to bring about God's good purposes for his people. I can't help but think this is how we treat the Lord. We treat him lightly. Lightly. <laughs> we act like we can just sin and complain and argue and laugh at our addictions and flesh, and God will just keep on walking with us and blessing us. Who's standing up to say the way of the Lord is a straight path? Get on it and walk straight. Stop calling on our friends and call on our God. Stop stumbling and falling and stand on the rock. Grab hold of the promise. We will not fall. We will not stumble. We will not fail. We need to get our eyes off of self and on to the eternal one. We're to think on what is good and pure and honorable and just and worthy of praise. <laughs> the only thing that ticks all those boxes is God himself. We're to set our eyes on Jesus. We're to set our attention on him. He's the only one. The only thing that should consume our thoughts and attention. Set your whole self on him.